Well, good afternoon. Uh, it's Christmas. We can do better than that, can't we? Good afternoon. All right, that's much better. You know, when I look around outside, it doesn't look much like a Wisconsin Christmas, does it? It doesn't. Uh, outside, we don't have the kinds of things that we're accustomed to. But inside here, it looks very much like Christmas all around the world. I was sharing with Dan Murphy, our uh, custodian here, and, and he takes care of the facilities. I was saying, you know, it's just not Christmas. And just as I said that, I looked out my office window on Silver Spring, and there was a young couple jogging. She was wearing shorts, and he was jogging barefoot down the road. I, even in July, I wouldn't run barefoot, but I think he just wanted to say, hey, remember that Christmas, that Christmas that I went jogging barefoot along Silver Spring? But let me introduce myself. My name is Matt Hadley. I'm the senior pastor here at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay, and I welcome you to this children's service. So thankful for the work that Pastor Andrew and Neil and others um, have, have done to help make this service a reality. We've been dealt some setbacks with some positive tests, so it, it's very fluid. Are you comfortable with being fluid? Yeah. You have no other choice, so that's, that's that. On your way in, you hopefully received a few things. A communion kit. If you have not received a communion kit, you're going to need this for when we do communion. And hopefully the young ones got the glow stick candles, and I, I know that some of you have the real candles. If you don't have those, I invite you to raise your hand, and our ushers will come and make sure that you have everything that you need. We have some up here that, that need some. Um, if you are at home with us, I invite you 
to find a cracker or a piece of bread, some juice or some wine, and to have a candle so that you can participate fully in what we have to offer here. I do want to give a warning. If you have a real candle and you are one who is hand sanitizing over and over, at a clergy meeting this last week, I heard a story of the fact that if you just put on hand sanitizer just before you have the flame, you are flammable for a little period of time. So if you want to hand sanitize for one last time and, and it'll be good for the service, uh, we don't want any uh, tragedies here. At 6 o'clock, we have our contemporary service, and it's online, and at 8 o'clock is our full formal chancel choir service. You can tune in on our live stream, or I know some of you will be coming back for that service. Uh, looking ahead, uh, there is no Saturday worship this week, and we're having a single service at 10 o'clock on Sunday the 26th, and then the very next weekend, we're also having a single service on Sunday at 10, although we are having Saturday at 5, and we're going to begin a brand new sermon series called This Year is Going to Be Different, and don't we hope that 2022 has some different things uh, about it that 2021 had, but we're going to look at new commitment, new vision, new attitudes, new understandings, and new practices. So you ready to worship Emmanuel, God with us? All right, and so I invite Pastor Andrew to lead us in our call to worship. Would you join me in the call to worship? Soon God, oh, excuse me, we count it in mere hours now. Soon the first pains of labor will be felt. Soon God will once again break into our lives, coming in a way that is expected yet unusual. God of birth, God of light, in this time of worship, reawaken in us the awe of Christmas. As we hear again the story of a young woman and a surprising visitor, remind us that we are called to respond to you in unexpected ways. And when we leave this place, may we be willing to sing praises. For a young woman who said yes, and the birth that we prepare to celebrate. I invite the community of faith to stand and to join together in our opening hymn this afternoon, O Come All Ye Faithful.
you may be seated. We are going to hear once again this evening the story of the birth of Emmanuel, God with us, as told to us by St. Luke, from chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. Continue on with verses 6 and 7. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. 
you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. Fifteen through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them.
Now, I'm going to read from Matthew, second chapter, verses 1, 7 through 12. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to the Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may go come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened up their treasures, they presented gifts to him of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. the mouths of the child. Yay! And so we come for an opportunity to present our own gifts. I don't think we brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but uh, we are invited to give to God our tithes, our offerings, our Christmas gifts, that we might be faithful with our ministry inside these walls, which leads us to be faithful far beyond them.
this time you've waited for my arms did you wrap yourself inside the unexpected so we might know that love would go that far be Amen. Would you join me as we uh, dedicate our offering to the glory of God for the sake of the world. We dedicate this offering and our lives to you, Lord. Well, good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you. I'm Andrew Jones. I'm the youth, children, and family pastor here. And this was great, all this crowded stage. But it was a little bit of a mess. I imagine that first night was a little bit of a mess, too. We had planned to have a real baby Jesus up until an hour ago. The plans don't always occur like we think they will, do they? Well, normally, when kids see me up here, I have a prop or two. And I brought this prop up actually several weeks early, and it's the tree. How many of you all probably have a tree at home, or you've obviously seen a tree, or you went to the tree lighting um, in Whitefish Bay over by the, the city market? I love Christmas trees. They're wonderful symbols of the season. They smell good. They're full reminders about Christmas. There's one part of the tree that's actually more important than the others. What do you suppose that is? Maybe it's the lights. I mean, the lights practically announce Christmas. They gleam, they shine, they celebrate the season. You know, whether the lights are all solid or, or they're a mixture of colors, the lights bring attention to the tree. They pierce the darkness. Jesus would be the light of the world in the same way. But guess what? The lights are not the most important part of the tree. What about the ornaments? Now, we don't have ornaments on this tree, but man, I love ornaments. 
There's all kinds of different ornaments, like these colorful bulbs and the homemade ornaments that kind of remind us of when somebody was in a certain grade and, and have glue and paste all over them, and sometimes they stick to one another. You know what I'm talking about, right? They're an expression of love from a child. Some decorations show our traditions. We have a pickle ornament and some kind of a tradition somewhere that if you put, find the pickle ornament, you open the first gift. Nobody knows where that comes from. But that's, that's a real thing, right? It's kind of weird, but it's fun. A little game for us. There are also ornaments that can tell the story of Jesus. But believe it or not, the ornaments are not the most important part of the tree. Then it's got to be the topper, right? Now, on a lot of trees, you maybe have a star or an angel. Now, those were, were things that guided people to Jesus, right? The star would guide the wise men. The angel, the shepherds, they would tell and announce the birth of Jesus. But as much as we think that would be the most important, it's actually not. But when I said wise men, I thought about gifts. The gifts must be the most important part, right? I mean, they're under the tree. They're kind of part of the tree, right? The gifts must be the most important part. I mean, they remind us of the gift of Jesus, too, and, and the wise men's gifts. But as much as I would like to say it's the gifts, it's the presence, it's not. It's not. The most important part of the tree isn't the lights, the ornaments, the toppers, the gifts. Although they're wonderful symbols of the season, none of them would be possible without the base, the thing that holds the tree up. I mean, without the base that holds the tree up, there would be no tree. It would just fall over. Your cats would love it, but that's not what Christmas is about. Sometimes we fail to focus on the most important parts of Christmas. Like I said earlier, we planned on having a real baby Jesus with us. A lot of us probably didn't even know the, the little toy doll that we have play, playing baby Jesus tonight. He kind of got lost between the angels and the shepherds and, and everything else. And that's how a lot of our Christmases go. The fun things, the cookies, the events, the family members. Sometimes the true meaning of Christmas can get lost among all the distractions, all the glitter, all the tinsel. You know, we added all these characters as, as the evening went on, and they kind of obscured the baby Jesus a little bit. It's important for us to focus on the most important part, the foundation of our faith. Without Jesus, there would be no Christmas. His birth was so important that Isaiah wrote about it centuries before it occurred. He said, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now, some of us might think that the lights, the ornaments, the presents are just too much. They might say that Christmas is overhyped. Have you ever heard that before? It's too commercial. You kids probably say that all the time. But not when we remember Jesus. Jesus chose to leave the glories of heaven to put on the constraints of human skin in order to be with us. Friends, he chose to become God with us. God chose all the mess, the heartache, the pain, the suffering. God chose it so we could know the fullness of love and the fullness of grace. So if you ask me, Christmas can't be overhyped, even if we tried. The incarnation, Jesus coming to us, is nothing short of incredible. So this Christmas, let's look beyond the lights, the ornaments, the presents, and the tree, 
and let them point to the foundation, not the tree stand, as I mentioned earlier, but Jesus. Let's remember what Christmas is really about and thank God for the gift that God gave us. And so this Christ child walked on earth for more than 30 years, the last three years of which was an active ministry, and he had a, an inner circle of people with him, the people he laughed with, the people that he challenged, the people that were side by side with him as he fed the hungry and uh, did miraculous things for those who were oppressed. But he knew it was coming, and the night before he was betrayed, the very night, that night that he was betrayed, before the crucifixion, for one last time he gathered with his disciples in an upper room. And he took a, a piece of bread, a, a common loaf of bread, common looking for his culture. This is pretty common for ours. And he took that loaf and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Take and eat. And that loaf worked its way around and one by one they all partook a piece of that loaf. When the supper was over, he took one of the containers of wine. It probably wasn't fancy like this, more earthenware. But he said a prayer of thanksgiving. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, which means for life everlasting. And so in a very COVID unfriendly way, they passed that around and they all put their mouth to it and, and partook. And so this single act has sustained the life of Christian worship from that moment to this very day, this holy Christmas time. And so in just a moment, I'm going to say a prayer of thanksgiving. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to bless these elements. Then we're going to join together in the Lord's Prayer. And then we are going to have the opportunity to peel back the top of cellophane to re re review, reveal the bread. And then we'll have the cup of blessing. Every time we have communion in a United Methodist Church, it's important for us to say everyone is welcome to partake. You don't need to be a member of this church. You don't need to be a member of any church anywhere. You are a precious child of God for whom came Emmanuel, God with us. So would you pause with me for a word of prayer? Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee and Bethlehem and found there no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born, so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And so now as uh, we join our voices together to offer the prayer that the Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, I invite you to join with brothers and sisters all around the world in receiving the bread of life. Take and eat. And we have the cup of blessing for the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. Take and drink in remembrance of him. And so as the lights in the house are coming down,
we have the moment we have been waiting for. The lighting of the Christ candle. And so we have this text. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And so as our ushers come forth, I invite you to get your candles ready. And if you have one of the glow sticks, go ahead and snap that like Lyle has. And So I invite you as a community of faith to carefully, especially if you have live fire, to stand. And as we are standing, I invite you to hold the light of Christ high. And as we do so, look around the room, look behind you, look at the light of Christ in everyone's face. If that doesn't bring you joy, nothing else can. So let's join our voices together. Joy to the world. Joy to the world.
Amen. Amen. At this time, we can extinguish the flames, even though we will take our light out into the world. And I want you to be dismissed with this benediction. In darkness we arrive, in light we now leave. Though once we stumbled, we now walk with confidence. Rise up and go, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. May the light of Christ lead us forevermore. Amen. Thank you.